fresh meat. I'm Lance Felchuk for Arrow in the Head's The Black Sheep, where we discuss and defend the genre's most divisive films. Okay, yeah, I'll admit it. I'm bored. I'll see you on the dark side of the moon. But I've been trying to keep myself busy. And with the weather warming up, uh, my mood has brightened up a bit. And I'd like to review something entertaining, exciting, you know? What do you say we tackle one of the main three franchises and engage with my favorite likable child killer? Yeah, that's right. Freddy Krueger. Now there are three entries that can all be considered the black sheep in this series. The one about self-doubt, coming to terms with one's sexuality, and a plethora of homoerotic subtext. Yes, Aiden. Then there's a cartoon parody entry that is so 90s. It's like if Parker Lewis can't lose, f***ed Twin Peaks, and made Briscoe County Jr. the Godfather. No, 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 today, my friends, I'd like to focus on the more adult-themed entry. I mean, kind of. It's my new look, I guess. <laughs> About the fears of childbirth, parenthood, and the rape of a nun. Yeah, this one gets weird. Let's jump into the wild and crazy entry from 1989. Nightmare on Elm Street 5. No? Really? Hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Child. I'm sure this is going to be considered a hot take, but uh, let's just get out of the way. The Nightmare series doesn't have one unwatchable entry. Excluding the first and maybe new Nightmare, these films have always put spectacle first. The second one was an awkward mix, but these movies took the well-worn slasher formula and put a surreal and visual interesting spin on it. Besides the amazing Robert England, these aren't really known for their top-notch acting. It's gonna burn off soon or it wouldn't be so bright. Feeling better? Oh, I feel like a million bucks. In the name of Loric, Prince of Elves, Demon Be Gone! Why don't you take off? Lee Springwood, cool off somewhere for a while. God damn it, Yvonne, you don't just run away from this guy. He finds you in your dreams. I mean, honestly, these are B-movies. Yeah, 100%. But these B-movies are fucking fantastic. So yeah, some are better than others. And even the train wreck called Freddy's Dead still aimed for a visually interesting 90s cartoon with a child murderer. Basically Rocco's modern life with a touch of molestation. At worst, these have a bit of fun. And at best, they are innovative and entertaining. Go watch the shit entries of Hellraiser or Halloween before you come at Freddy with all your nonsense. This is a direct sequel to part four. Alice is still a protagonist, still dating Dan, and is unknowingly pregnant. And I miss the days of convoluted sequels, where every entry was required to start however the last movie ended. And I'm not being sarcastic. I love the oddball creative decisions born out of these restrictions and find this ingredient to be sorely missing in the genre nowadays. What if a director came in and hated your last film, taking what was an emotional scene building towards something, something with heart and soul, only to make it a fucking joke? We open with Alice nearly drowning in a shower, only to be forced out into some creepy cellar. Cold and naked and vulnerable, she wanders into an insane asylum, becoming Amanda Kruger. Though introduced in part three, Dream Child goes the extra step, showing, dreamishly, the events that created Freddy. I love how this is done with this epic sweeping shot, and the look of the asylum. A fever dream of Lynch and Burton, sepia toned and elongated. Absolutely beautiful. But we'll get back to that later. This starts off hitting hard, with Dream Child beginning with a gang rape. A bunch of maniacs swarming Amanda. Let's not forget, she was stuck here over the holiday weekend. Man, this shit is brutal. By this point, Freddy coming back isn't a big deal. I mean, you know, we expect it, right? A dog pissed fire in the last one, and I'm not even sure how he came back in the third. But part five, the Dream Child goes bonkers, having Kruger born a demon puppet after invading the dreams of Alice's baby. I like the idea that Freddy isn't dead, just in a, a limbo state plotting his next move. In a cool twist, he's haunting a baby's dreams to recharge and come back swinging. This is surprisingly imaginative. And I dig the bizarre birthing scene. Kinda looking like Ren, he crawls out to the church where he was defeated and is reborn. And yeah, one of his arms is awkwardly longer. But this dude is still growing, can we give him a little time? At least it was his arm, you know, instead of... No! 
I really hope Sophia D survived. For being a well-known rushed entry, I've always loved the plot and most of its execution. It balances the odd and the interesting with a level of precision that should get more credit. Which begs the question, who directed this? Hey babe, who directed The Dream Child? <sighs> okay, 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 wow, jeez. Stephen Hopkins? Wait, wait, wait. The man behind Blown Away, Predator 2, Ghost in the Darkness, and Judgment Night. That's Stephen Hopkins? The man responsible for some of the greatest 90s cult classics is behind the camera here? <laughs> I love it. The directing is just great. An alienish Freddy puppet running around, intense dinner conversations, and a comic book Kruger. Things have been heading this direction for quite a while, but here they're at their visually bizarre peak. And I'm all for it. Dan's Geiger-influenced bike transformation is so f***ing metal, it could be an Iron Maiden cover. Look at the Asylum's gothic design. Alice's uterus is the horror version from Look Who's Talking. Or the Esha-inspired battleground at the end. Dream Child has style. I know Stephen Hopkins has publicly denounced the film, but I've never taken much stock in an artist's opinion of their own work. His total vision wasn't what ended up on screen, and yeah, I get it. I can get the disappointment. Let's not forget that Stephen King loves Dreamcatcher. David Gilmore can't stand the wall. And Kevin Bacon hated Tremors up until like a few years ago. Don't be ashamed by Dream Child, Stephen, when there is more than enough to love. No, save that for Lost in Space. I could never see how much you cared. Dream Warriors was the first entry where the kills were more theatrical, visually specific for the character at hand. And it was a needed growth for the series. It kept it viable. You know, Revenge was the first attempt to figure out how Freddy would operate as a continuous threat. Yeah, it didn't quite land. But where Revenge stands is kind of an odd, interesting sequel in a bubble. Dream Warriors was the T2 of the Nightmare series, and evolved into something greater. Part 5 doesn't disappoint on this. And how these kills are framed and visually represented, at their core, they're mean, cruel. Dan's motorcycle merge, Greta's bizarre dinner scene, or even Mark's comic book invasion. I mean, they're all different, they're all interesting, but my one issue is the lack of gore. It seems oddly cut, and well, yeah, this got the new blood treatment from the MPAA. In fact, a YouTube buddy of mine, uh, who's damn near a historian when it comes to alternate versions of cuts, is going to help me out a bit. My old friend James Carlson, of Another Dead Reviews, Decensored, which is all about different edits, and the anime snob. Which has no relation to Brad Jones, the cinema snob, or Stone Gremlin in any form of way, and let's just keep it like that. And while I agree with everyone else that the film sucks, I apologize for thinking that, Lance, I do think that the death scenes are one of the few good things about the film. And in the case of the unrated and R-rated versions of the death scenes, the differences are definitely noticeable in the, both the tone and how vicious and nasty they can be, especially in the case of Dan's. These extended shots of Dan merging with the bike is very Cronenberg-esque, or you know, like how you put it once, Tetsuo the Metal Man. Though the greatest death scene is also pretty mean too when you get down to it. Yeah, I agree. Force feeding this girl parts for herself, especially because she has an eating disorder. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Yeah, this ain't for the easily offended. Apparently Mark's death scene also had to have been edited down for R rating, though I don't know how you could really try to cut down a death scene where a guy gets turned into paper and is shredded to death while ink bleeds out of him. Maybe it was the tone. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's my main complaint with the kills. I love how it looks, but even a bit of animated blood would have gone a long way. Fucking MPAA. Listen, I'm under no illusion that this is a great film. Uh, this ain't the Baba Duke of Dreams here. This series was not about acting, and the Dream Child had some hard dialogue to stomach. These movies are pretty formulaic, and the Dream Child suffers from franchise fatigue. And listen, I also don't love Freddy's makeup either. I mean, it's not terrible, and I don't think there is a terrible makeup job in the original seven films. Uh, the remake, on the other hand. But the Freddy here is supposed to be older and withered. An idea that sounds great, but looks off. And honestly, I might even argue that part two is the best makeup job of the series. You know, it's, it's really defined brow bone and his sunken in eyes. And that's the thing, Dream Child isn't a bad entry. I mean, it fits along. Like I said, franchise fatigue might be the biggest problem, but what we've come to love is weird, interesting kills, cool directing, and this wild 80s, early 90s color palette. Stephen Hopkins added an entertaining visual style and a unique story in a series that has always been a slasher on acid. Beginning with Dream Warriors, Kruger was kind of a badass, and I'll always have a soft spot for the more kinetic entries. You know, maybe it's my love for a bygone era, or like most things, 
they change to a point where it's no longer recognizable and your time is officially up. Eh, who knows? But there's always been something comfortable about these wild, colorful, fever dream sequels that aimed for the sky. And the dream child is no exception. Maybe, just maybe, try and have a little fun. I'm convinced more and more that it's a skill most people have lost. Trust me, please. It won't fucking kill you.